From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Is this Mr. Dollar, the insurance investigator? That's right. My name is Mason, Carl Mason. I'm an adjuster from Sierra All Risk, a West Coast company. Yeah? I need some help. I flew east to meet the claim of a beneficiary, a $40,000 policy. Her name is Jackie Cleaver. Now that I'm here, I can't find her. You mean she's missing? I can't find her. I have an address, but it led me up a blind alley. I've got the authority to hire you if you're free. We can talk about it. Good. I had correspondence with her just last week. It's strange she should drop out of sight so suddenly. Edmund O'Brien in the transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Sierra All Risk Insurance Company, 5th and Hill Streets, Los Angeles, California. The following, like it or not, is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Jackie Cleaver matter. Expense account item 1250, cab fare from my apartment to the Excelsior Hotel, Hartford, where I was directed to room 216 and Mr. Carl Mason. I'm having drinks sent up. Or is this too early for you, Easterner? Well, it's a little for me, thanks. It's the first time I've been in this part of the country for six years. One thing you can say for it, it doesn't change, except for the weather. The West changes every day. So I've heard. I'm still growing up. I heard a lot of good things about you, Dollar. Well, that's something new. When I ran into this stone wall looking for this Jackie Cleaver, I called a few of the companies around here. They all suggested you. Probably to keep me out of their hair. What's the background on this thing? I've got it all here. Policies in the name of Schumacher, Howard Schumacher. He was killed in a traffic accident out there. Lots of them, you know. Here, see? Her address was listed as 382 Gardner Street in Manchester. That's just a few miles east of here. I know the place. What'd you learn there? It's a queer sort of a place. A man running around in trousers and a set of long underwear. I got the idea that he was lying to me. What did he say? That she hadn't lived there in two months. How could that be when I've had correspondence with this Cleaver woman in the past two weeks? A mail could have been forwarded to someplace else from the Manchester Post Office. What was the return address on her letters to you? I didn't notice. I didn't think she would have mentioned any change, but she didn't. This man, uh, Forsland was his name, said she moved to a place called Middletown, but he didn't have an address. I went over there, but it's too big a place for an untrained man like me. Let me see that. Yeah. This says she's Schumacher's wife. Ex-wife, I believe. Will you take it over for me? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a crack at it, anyway. Good. You can take these forms with you. This is the one we want signed. And here. Here's one of my business cards. I'll jot the phone and room number down for you. Thanks. I'll let you know what I find out. <laughs> Expense count item two, $35, car rental and mileage. It was three o'clock when I left the Excelsior Hotel, but I figured there was enough left of the afternoon to make the short trip to Manchester and back. Jackie Cleaver's address there was a big frame house set back from the street at the edge of town. A sign that stuck out from a snowdrift called it a convalescent home. Mr. Forslund? I am. Well, my name is Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. Are you the same as that other one? I'd like to talk to you about the same woman. Well, you better come in. You've got to close the door one way or the other. Thanks. Yeah, you might find it too warm in here. You've got to keep it that way for my patients. Now, what's the matter with that Cleaver woman? Nothing that I know of. man left her $40,000. I'm trying to find her so she can get it. $40,000? wouldn't take you long to find me, I can tell you that. Are you sure she didn't say anything about where she was going when she left here? Well, she just picked up and packed one morning, saying she'd write, which she never did. Did she give any reason? No, said she needed to change. Was she an invalid? Not so as you can notice. Came here for a rest, she said. She was well enough to go clean into half or to a bank when a check came twice a month. Did she have any friends I could look up? Anyone come to see her? 
Nobody, I'd say. She was a lonely woman. Wouldn't talk about self. Did you happen to notice where her mail came from? Wasn't any except the checks. They came from California, Los Angeles. Uh-huh. Well, I won't take up any more of your time, Mr. Forslin. Thanks a lot. Not so much good, I tell you. Oh, uh, what does she look like? I've never seen her. Oh, Fortish, I'd say. Well, turned out for that age, had a bit of color to her hair, I expect. That was brown, sharp as features and knowing eyes. Saw a lot of life in the time, I'd say. She was strange, not, not peculiar, you understand, just strange. I caught the Manchester post office before it closed, and a cooperative clerk there gave me her forwarding address in Middletown. It's about 15 miles south of Hartford, and I drove down there after dinner that same night. It wasn't quite the setting you'd expect for a divorcee who received checks from California twice a month, and it was in line for $40,000. It was a ratty little hotel on the darker end of town. There was one man in the lobby and one woman behind the desk. Oh, Good evening, mister. What'll it be? I understand you have a Mrs. Jackie Cleaver staying here. Jackie Cleaver? Are you kidding? No, oh, I'm not kidding. Is she in? Uh, she don't stay here anymore. You know where she went? It's hard to tell about Jackie. What do you want with her, honey? An insurance company wants to find her. Somebody left her $40,000 in a policy. Are you kidding? She was married to a man named Schumacher in California. Jackie was married? And divorced. But she stayed on as beneficiary. Huh. She never said anything about that marriage, but there's plenty of her that doesn't come out. You sound like you know her pretty well. Not as well as some, I guess. When did she leave here? Oh, two or three weeks ago, anyway. I can look it up. More important, do you know where she went? No, not exactly. She said something about New Haven. You might try the Bridgeport house. All right, I will. Imagine her married. <laughs> That must be why she got those checks from out west. They came here, too? Yeah. Alimony. Well, that's Jackie. I hope you find her, mister. Thanks, so do I. Hey. Yeah? I'll walk out with you. All right. Uh, what's this about Jackie? You must have heard all of it if you heard any. Are you a friend of hers? Yeah. Yeah, who was this Schumacher you say she was married to? I don't know. What's all the mystery about her? Oh, there's no mystery. She's restless, likes to move around. Beneficiaries get paid off every day. Everything about this thing is normal but her. Why is she so hard to find? Oh, maybe she don't want to get found by every Tom, Dick, and Harry passing through. It's none of my business. I'm being paid to get her signature on a form, then she gets her money. Are you from the West Coast? No, I'm from Hartford. Well, maybe I could locate her for you. What then? I'll give you my card. You can phone me at my apartment. All right. Dollar, huh? All right, Dollar, I'll see what I can do. Call Mason, please. He's in room 216. Just a moment, please. Yes? This is Dollar, Mr. Mason. Oh, what luck have you had? I'm not sure yet. Just got home from Middletown. I met a man down there who thought he knew where she was. Hey, what do you know about her? Well, nothing at all. Why? Well, it looks to me like she's on the run from something. You know, I thought there was something funny about that place in Manchester. What else have you run into? Well, it's just obvious that she wants to stay out of sight, that's all. Well, we don't care about that. We just want to get our books clear. Yeah. I got to hang up now. Well, I'll be here if anything comes up. All right. Bye, Mason. This is him, Bert. Get back inside, Dolan. Well, it didn't take you long to get here, did it? Stay away from the telephone. Sit down over here. What's the automatic for? To show you how serious we are about this. About what? You were talking to somebody named Mason. What's the rest of it? Look, I'm not used to being pushed around in my own apartment. Don't push too hard or I might make you use that gun. Calm down. Was it Carl Mason? What if it was? Where is he? Go find him. 
I don't want to beat it out of you if I don't have to. Hey, Bert, never mind. Here it is. It's a card by the telephone. Give me it. Hey, get off. You... Drop it, Dollar. Drop it. All right, come here. I'll give you a chance to try that again, I promise you. Come on, Dollar, get up. Happy, go get a dish towel or something. Stop his head bleeding. I don't owe it to him. Come on, get up. Now, how much trouble are you going to give us? Uh, how much do you want? How do you know about all this? Oh, what? I want to know how much Mason told you. About what? About Jackie. Don't play it smart with me. Uh, I couldn't if I wanted to. He didn't tell me anything. Did he come alone? Mason? How the devil should I know how he came? Here, here's your towel, Dollar. You're wrecking your suit. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, sure. You got a license in this state, so I'm going to take a chance on you. What does that mean? I want you to stop looking for Jackie. There's going to be trouble anyhow. But if you don't stop, there's going to be more. Let me see that card, Happy. Yeah, that was handy, wasn't it? The Excelsior. Hey, what about Dollar? I don't know. It'd be tough taking him with us. The way he looks, somebody would notice him. You want me to go down? I better go, I guess. You stay here with him. Keep him away from that phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good luck, Bert. Thanks. Uh, give me 25 minutes, and you can get out of here. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What's it all about, Happy? Well, now, this thing is too big for the both of us, as they say. Now, don't talk about it. Just pretend you're here alone, and your phone is out of order. <laughs> I knew what to expect at the hotel after the one called Happy had left, and I was able to get down there. But I was only half right. Excuse me. Excuse me. Could I get through, please? Hey, mister, you can't go in there. Here's my ID. I was working for Mason. Oh, I'm the house detective. Come on. Where is he? In the bathroom. I closed the door. He'd evidently been blasted into the bathroom by the shock of a heavy caliber gun that had taken him in the middle of the abdomen and the chest. But it wasn't Carl Mason. It was the gunman who'd come to kill him. The one called Bert. We will return you to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. You can sing it again for an hour tonight on most of these same CBS stations. And while you're enjoying this merry, tuneful hour with Jan Murray and the gang, maybe you'll get a phone call and a chance to solve the phantom voice mystery. The cash jackpot is the highest it's been in weeks. Be listening for Sing It Again this evening on CBS. Now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Except for one unfortunate coincidence, I probably would have been able to drop the whole matter right there. And I would have, gladly. But it turned out that the lieutenant assigned the case was an acquaintance of mine. He had once informed me that a friend of his was on the state board from which I got my license, and he had never let me forget it. Now, John, you tell me this fellow Mace hired you? Name's Mason, Schiller. Carl Mason. Oh, oh, I jotted it down with a dull pencil. It's hard to read. Yeah. Mason. He hired you to get the signature of this Cleaver woman. Now, who is she? I wish I knew. I wasn't able to find her. Well, now, uh, who did this uh, uh, Mason say she was? It's pretty obvious he fed me a pack of lies. Looks like he hired me to put the finger on her. Oh, why would he do that? I don't know, Schiller. If I'd known, I wouldn't be here. Now, you ought to be more careful who you hire out to, John. Now, uh, let's see. You say that a second man named uh, Happy held you in your apartment at gunpoint while the other one, uh, the deceased, became this hotel room. Is that true? Of course it's true. If you were any kind of a policeman, things like that wouldn't happen to honest taxpayers. You haven't been in trouble in Hartford for quite a while, have you, John? Not this kind. I'm surprised you didn't try to notify the police prior to the shooting. I did. Look at my head. And now you're asking me to risk infection just so you can write a lot of illegible nonsense in that notebook oh, of now, yours. Now, John, John, let's start over in a better mood. 
force has always cooperated with you. At least I have. You ought to be more thankful. All right, Schiller. But please, put away the pencil. Let me tell you what I know. Mason evidently came from the West Coast to find the Cleaver woman. Why the West Coast? Well, he had forms and a business card from a Western insurance company. She had been receiving mail from California. The guy called Happy mentioned the West Coast. Now, how would that add up? Florida? Yeah. Go ahead. He's your man, Schiller. And he's going to be halfway back to the West Coast unless you remember your training and get some men to cover the airlines and railroads and get some roadblocks yeah, out. I, I, I was planning to. You want anything more from me? Uh, you can't just drop this thing, John. How would that look in my report? What do you want me to do, Schiller? Uh, find that woman. No use my wasting men when you've already started on it. <laughs> Expense account item three, ten dollars to the hotel doctor who stitched and bandaged my head. Item four, dollar and thirty cents, night letter to a West Coast detective agency asking for a rundown on both Carl Mason and Jackie Cleaver. Then at about eleven, I started back to the hotel in Middletown. you again. Yeah. Where is everybody? Who? The guy who was in the lobby the last time I was here. Uh, place is all yours. Hasn't been a soul in since you left, I don't think. Does he live here? Well, I'm not so sure. I know just which one you I mean. I think you do. They call him Happy, which he isn't going to be when I find him. I don't think I know him. What's the matter, honey? Enough to make it smart for you to level with me, honey. The police aren't far behind me. What do you want? I want Happy. Does he live here? No, he just hangs around once in a while. Got a girlfriend lives here. Yeah? Where is she? She's not home. She's sick in the hospital. Which one? The county hospital. What's her name? Nadine Williams. What's the matter with Happy? He and another guy named Bert something teamed up to get rid of somebody. But it backfired. Bert was killed. Oh. What is there about Jackie Cleaver that could cause this trouble? I... Don't know anything about it. If you're holding things back from me, I can have the police drag you in. I don't know what it's all about with Jackie. But I can tell you a few places where you might find Happy. What's his real name? Snell Chandler. He was going to meet Bert tonight. Do you know where? Uh, a couple of places. One's the Wigwam. That's a roadhouse on the highway south of here. The other's further. Tower in New London. All right, I'll check him. If he happens to come in here again, tell him what happened. And tell him he can do himself some good by talking to me before the police get to him. I don't think he'll come back here, not with trouble like this. He probably doesn't know about it yet. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. All right, if I see him, I'll tell him what you said. <laughs> you ordered, but I got some others. It's all right. Just any kind of dark rum. This okay? Sure. Get a big call for rum when it's as cold as this. Try that. That's fine. Say, uh, has Happy Chandler been in tonight? Happy who? Not the famous one. No, oh, I thought you were pulling my leg. No, nobody with that name comes in here. We got a pretty steady set of customers here. Oh, once in a while, somebody driving by drops in. Maybe you got your signals mixed. That could be. Still, there isn't another wigwam around here that I know of. Somebody told me he comes in here. Not that I know of. How about another one? No, thanks. What do I owe you? Fifty cents. Mm. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry you got mixed up. It's a lot warmer inside, isn't it, Happy? No, I just got here. Look, uh, May at the hotel gave you a bum steer, see? Don't be too rough on her. She has to play along with us if she couldn't stay in business. Yeah, here, that's all I care about. She phoned and told me what happened, so I came over here to talk it over with you. 
Bert didn't meet me, so I guess it's straight about him, huh? You'll read about it. Did Mason get away? Temporarily. But I don't think he'll get out of the area. Police have it covered. Well, I wish him luck. You told me I could do myself some good if I talked to you before the police picked me up. That's the way I see it. You're in a bad spot. But if you play ball with me, I'll do the same for you. Keep keep coming. I didn't know who you were when you and Bert conspired for a killing. That's a wrap I might save you. Uh-huh. The police don't have your name yet, or your description, or the name of the hotel in Middletown. What do you want? The Cleaver woman. She's the middle of this mess. She's clean. She didn't do anything. She must have to bring Mason all the way from the West Coast after her. Bert died trying to stop him. She must have done something to rate all that action. I mean, as far as tonight goes, she's out of the picture. She doesn't even know what happened. What would you do with her? The police want to talk to her. If she's clean, as you say, she shouldn't mind that. Oh, I don't think she would. You what? <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you believe me? She wouldn't. She's got no reason to be afraid of the police. Well, it's holding us up, then. Well, it's too late tonight. Look, i got to make a couple of calls. You'll be in your apartment tomorrow morning. I'll phone you about ten. Okay, Happy. I'd call myself stupid, except you showed up here tonight and you didn't have to. Uh-huh. You'll hear from me. I'll call at ten. The first thing I got the next morning was the information I'd wired for. Carl Mason was a disbarred lawyer who had linked himself with a syndicate that until recently had controlled the wire service, etc., of four western states. The machine had been destroyed by the Supreme Court testimony of a state's witness. The rundown on Jackie Cleaver filled out the rest. She had been the witness. Johnny Dollar. Dollar, this is Mason. Who? Carl Mason. Oh, well. I want to give myself up, Dollar, but I want you to take me in. Why? I've read the papers this morning. Since you were held by these gunmen, you'll be important to my plea. What plea is that? I can build the tightest case on self-defense Connecticut has ever seen, and you know it. You know that man was on his way to kill me? Yeah. Uh, but you were wrong about my motives for coming here. I didn't intend to do Miss Cleaver any harm. I think you've made a good choice. It'd be tough to prove what your motives were. I want your statement as part of the formal arrest. Where can I meet you and when? It'd be better for me later in the day, maybe right afternoon. You all right where you are? Yes, I think so. It's a good thing you didn't try to leave town. They got everything covered. I thought they would have. All right, Dollar. I'll wait where I am and call back at 12.30. I'll be here. Goodbye. Hello? Hey, a phone's been busy. Oh, is this happy? Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, somebody had a job for me. What's happening with you? Jackie's with me. Uh, what's the name of the cop in charge of Bert's killing? Lieutenant Schiller. Schiller. Schiller, is he a precinct man or from downtown? Downtown. You have him in his office at 11. Jackie will meet you there. I'll meet her at the desk out front. All right. I'll have her there. And he did. I recognized her from the description as she walked through the door. Dark, nicely featured, and wearing conservative clothes. She held out a gloved hand when I told her who I was. Well, Mr. Dollar, I didn't have any idea I was causing everyone so much trouble. Well, you are hard to locate. I've had to be. Where's the lieutenant? This way. Lieutenant Schiller, this is Miss Jackie Cleaver. Well, uh, sit down, Miss Cleaver. Thanks, Lieutenant. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> well, we've uh, had ourselves a little trouble, haven't we? I'm afraid so. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Oh, I don't blame you entirely. From what Dollar tells me, you're to be commended for testifying for the state out there. I didn't know the secret was out, Mr. Dollar. Part of the agreement was to keep it. I wired for some information on you. What did you find out? Only that your testimony put the syndicate out of business. When you hear the rest, I know you won't talk about it outside this office. They've been very nice to me in payment for what I did for them. They understood, of course, that it wasn't safe for me out there, so they saw that I got here and have been sending a small amount of money twice a month. That's not quite the accepted thing, is it? My money is sent to a lawyer in Los Angeles who sends it on to me. Well, I suppose they have their reasons, Dolly. That's none of our business. I take it the syndicate learned where you were, huh? <laughs> you can't hide from those people. I don't know how they found me, but they did a few months ago. I've had to stay on the move ever since. 
I suppose not knowing that, you must have thought I was an arch criminal myself. I was curious. My friends here have done everything they could to help me. Poor Bert. I don't think he went to kill this Mason. Why not? Well, I think he went to frighten him away. Is there any news about Mason? Oh, oh, we will haul him in. Don't you worry about that. He's ready to give himself up. It told Dollar this morning. Oh. Well, I hope you get him. Maybe that'll put an end to it. Do you need me any more, Lieutenant? Uh, well, I don't think so. Uh, do you, Dollar? I guess not. Well, I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused. Well, now that we understand it, it's perfectly all right. Mr. Dollar. Thanks for coming in. I'm glad I finally met you. The second surrender, that of Mason, should have finished the whole thing, but it didn't. I waited for his call at my apartment. When it came, I met him for instruction in a drugstore a few blocks away. I made one mistake. I answered the only question he asked me. Have you found Jackie Cleaver? Yeah, I talked with her. And I'll tell you what she said. The court thinks she's a brave, courageous woman. Arrangements have been made so that she gets paid for her service to it. That's right. Well, I'll put the lie to that. What's the matter with it? Well, she testified all right. She knocked our syndicate out so the one she was mixed up with could move in. What do you think of that? Is it true? Of course it's true. That prosecutor thought he was using her, but she was using him. The situation the way it is, she could perjure herself again to some federal investigators and make it look as though there was collusion between the state and the syndicate that moved in. It's not true, but... She could cause some heads to fall. Glad I live in Connecticut. Don't be stuffy. Ready to go? You're right, I'm ready. I don't care what the charges against me are, as long as I can get the truth about that character on record. My car's outside. Down this way. Don't forget, you heard those men say they were going to kill me. I want the arresting... Wait. Yeah, that's the other one. Happy, what do you want? Get out of the way, Tyler. I've lived up to my part of the bargain. Come on. Let's play it out the right way. Get out of the way. Wait a minute, you. Happy, get out of here. No. No. As I said, it should have ended when Mason gave himself up, but it didn't. Snell, Happy Chandler, was apprehended. But the search was on again for Jackie Cleaver. I wish them luck. They can have the job. Expense account item five, $45.75 miscellaneous. Expense account total, $280. Remarks? Since Mason actually had nothing to do with the Sierra All Risk Insurance Company, I hardly expect you to honor this account. But you should. It should be worth that to learn what goes on behind your back. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music by Wilbur Hatch. Edmund O'Brien's latest picture is the Paramount Pictures production, Warpath. Featured in tonight's cast were Ed Begley, Dick Ryan, Mary Lansing, Sidney Miller, Tim Graham, Virginia Gregg, High Everback, and Jim Nusser. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Dan Coverley inviting you to join us next week at this time when Edmund O'Brien will return as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. If you've ever tried to read a book in a bad light, you know the irritation that can be caused by tired eyes, by a sick, nagging headache. This same irritation may be causing your boy or girl to lose valuable study hours in school. Bad lighting may be dragging down their grades. Your community school is your responsibility. Do all you can to keep its classrooms well-lighted, modern in every respect. Remember, better schools mean better students, better citizens tomorrow. Now stay tuned for the Von Monroe Caravan, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations.
Wanted by your American Red Cross immediately, 4,000 emergency blood donors. The recent influenza epidemic severely curtailed the shipment of life-giving blood to wounded GIs. This blood is needed urgently. Become a Red Cross blood donor now. Call your local Red Cross office at once for an appointment. This is CBS, where you laugh at Jack Benny every Sunday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.